Moran Ironworks built the Miss Margie, an all-aluminum high-speed vessel for Shepler's Mackinac Island Ferry. Join us as we learn the ins and outs of the shipbuilding process. President and owner of Moran Ironworks, Tom Moran, gives us an inside look at the vessel to show us every little detail. And finally, follow the Miss Margie along the high wire corridor to the Pork Hell site where it is launched into the water. This is Miss Margie, 22 foot wide, 85 foot long aluminum passenger vessel for the Straits of Mackinac. The idea started with the Hope, which is a vessel that we did a aft extension on back in 2010. Then two years ago, we did a bow and pilot house and total repower for the Sakri Blue, which is their um, freight ferry or freight boat that goes back and forth to the island and then this one's uh, basically a culmination of both of those ideas we've done an aft section we've done a bow section in a pilot house now we get to throw it all together in one idea and build a complete vessel. This is the first new vessel construction project that we've done here at Moraine Ironworks. We've had a couple past projects where we've provided overhaul, mid-body extensions, and some reinforcement of the bow and some other small projects, but this is the first actual full construction we've done here. Before that, we've done, um, we just completed the barge construction and launch for DeRocher Marine, which is the first full marine project that we've done here, and that was two ocean-going deck barges that we fabricated and delivered. So this is pretty exciting for us because it's the first all aluminum, everything fabricated here um, for Moran Ironworks, the first project. So. The process uh, really starts with a client and a, a trusting relationship with, uh, with Moran Ironworks and the client. And that, that actually, that started a number of years ago, if not a decade or more ago. From there, uh, the concept really starts with the client and they like their entire fleet to look like yachts and that's why that the shepherd's feet, fleet look the way they look. So the client says I want my boat to look like this and then you have a marine architect say okay how can how can we make that fit into something that will actually float and, and move and then from there the, the marine architect uh, we get the drawings from the marine architect and then make uh, detailed drawings or, or drawings that you can build off of. Each and every piece on the boat needs a drawing. As you can see behind me, there are a lot of different pieces. It, you can't order the side of the boat in one piece. So we detail it up. Everything's arced. It's all going to have curves. Buy it in raw stock sizes. Take it down to our processing room and process it from there. So we did do all the fabrication that's on the vessel, so all the aluminum you see, that was done by Moran Ironworks. In this instance, um, the systems are being installed by Moran Ironworks in conjunction with Shepler's and their engineering team. They have in-house engineers that do that. So it's been a really unique experience for us because our guys, our, all of our employees can see that they have that experience. We want to do what makes most sense and creates value for both of us. So. It's not uncommon for us to work with other clients in, in other areas where, where we would do a certain portion of the project and they would, they would do a certain portion of the project. We've, we've had uh, clients that had employees work right in the shop with us before on different projects. So that's not uncommon at all. Matter of fact, that's what it takes to, uh, to make a project complete or make a pro project sensible and valuable for both parties. I would guess that somebody from Shepler's is here every day, no matter if it's Chris or Billy or Charlie. I mean, there's somebody here every day. So I think that's really important to be able to know because there's so many different personalities. There's Marine Ironworks personalities from project management down to the guys in the shop. Same thing with Shepler's. They have their PR people and all the way down to, you know, any of their painters, anybody who's working hand in hand. I think it's really important that everybody's in tune with the progress of the project and they keep in touch with us, we keep in touch with them. So it's been pretty tight since the since the project was even talked about, you know, in concept. People have been in communication and obviously as we get closer and closer to, to them taking delivery of the boat to do all the finishing touches, I mean it's really important for them to stay here and make sure everything's on schedule. So it's been it's been a good experience. Uh, this is Miss Margie. 
She's uh, a vessel for Shepler's Ferry. Uh, we're going to take a walk through, but the first thing that I wanted to show you is the complexity of the systems. You see the vents, you see the bilge pump holes, you see the, the shafting, the seals, uh, rudder tubes, that type of thing. That's, uh, the boat itself is a piece of artwork, but really the systems that it takes to make the boat go forward are, are uh, a complexity all of their own and present a lot of challenges during the course of fabrication. So let's take a look at the rest of the boat. So really none of this was here this morning. None of these seat brackets were here. We fabbed them in a different part of the shop and then the guys brought them up here and started installing them this morning. So a lot has happened here in one day. In the pilot house, of course, my favorite, you know, my guys have really done a fantastic job of it. And really the only part of it that I've had anything to do with is the pilot house. So let's come take a look. It's all stainless steel. And you only see a small portion of it, but the radios are being installed, the hydraulics for the steering, uh, all the electronics for each engine. You have a engine, engine complete control center uh, shut off for every all the engines, the bilge pumps, the vents. Uh, tremendous amount of electrical that's hidden behind here. So really all in all, between the pilot house and the engine room are really the most complex systems of the entire boat. And for me, the most fun. Just that you're integrating electrical and hydraulic and uh, you know, all of that stuff has to function when you turn the switch on and there's a long ways between here and the engine, so, and the rudders. So it's, it's actually, there's some, there's, you know, some challenges in making it all work and work right. The, the engine's probably my favorite part. I didn't have anything to do with that, but they, you know, these guys built the, the girders that the engine set on and then set the girders in, into the hull, welded it all up, put the hull around it. So, you know, that's the massive part. That's really the meat and potatoes. This was really a fun part. You know, the, a lot of the other stuff is like hard work and sweat. This was really the fun part. You know, having the client come in and say, you know, I want, I want, I want this laid out kind of like this. And I think, you know, I want those controls there and that there. And you have to pack it all in there. And, and make it all work and make it look good. And our, our client, Bill Scheffler, is just really happy with the way that the pilot house turned out because none of this is on paper. This all has to be done. You know, the pilot house itself is here, but none of the interior is drawn or drafted. So it's, it's really custom built just for what they have. So this gives you at least some idea of how complex the systems are. Now this won't look like this in another couple of days, but it gives you some idea of what the complexity up here, actually if you can move up just a little bit further, you can see some of the complexity of the cooling systems, the plumbing systems, uh, heat transfer systems that, that the boat uses. Also, you see one of the engines setting forward two of the engines setting backward and run into a V-drive to get the angle and the position that we need to have those engines in so that the, the boat stays level. See how the, all three engines are, are separated and, and at different angles. It's to coordinate that energy and, and pro, you know, get that weight proportional to the, to the hull so it sets properly in the water. But this should give you just some idea how complex the systems are. And they're not done yet. There's heat exchangers. We'll be able to load the engines with coolant and run them for you know, 20 or 30 minutes, but we won't need to. Five minutes is all we'll need to do what we need to do until we get it in the water. And once it's in the water, they'll run it up to Mackinac on its own power. But yeah, we can do the test fires with, with uh, with the engines right the way they are. To, to be able to harness 2,000 horsepower in each motor. So they really the, you know, the backbone of, of transmitting that much energy. And this is something we did months ago. Um, and you see that they're all at very unique angles to accept the uh, engines. Uh, this engine's at a very different angle than that engine. This engine goes straight into a V-drive 
and then the V-drive is on an angle out. This, this engine, actually, the propeller shaft hooks directly to the engine and, and propels out the back. So each of, those, each of those girders had to be specially built right here, and our guys just did a fantastic job of it. I know it looks messy in here, but in a couple days, we'll, we'll be building catwalks to walk between here, uh, wrapping up all of the electrical and pneumatic and hydraulic systems. So. A lot will happen here in the next few days. It's a uh, it's a proud moment. It's uh, you know for Michigan, by Michigan, 
It's something where as a, a fabricator, project manager, business owner, we can go 15 to 30 minutes north of here, depending on where you live, and touch, feel, ride, and see it every day if you want. It's, uh, it's excellent for uh, local economy and Michigan tourism. Cap Shuffler is named after my, uh, my grandfather, and then the Miss Margie uh, will be named after my grandmother. And uh, back in the 40s, uh, when my grandfather and father were running it, they, they, uh, my grandpa built a, a kit boat, a 40 foot long mahogany uh, boat that was named Miss Margie. So we're kind of bringing the Miss Margie back into, uh, back into the program. Well, you know, it brings to mind, the other day I was, I was, uh, I was walking down the, the stairway and one of them, one of a great employee, uh, Rick Togetsky, who worked on this ship right from right from the time we set the keel, and and uh, I asked him, I said, you know, we're getting close to being done. I said, Rick, uh, hey, did you ever think that we'd finish it? And he goes, Oh yeah, I knew we'd finish it, but I didn't think it'd be this impressive. So and that probably sums it up right there. You know, we always knew we'd finish it, but something that this majestic you know i mean you could almost call it that but I, I don't think even even everybody that worked on this knew that it would be as impressive of an accomplishment as what it is so i know my grandmother's up and above looking down on us and making sure uh and it's pretty cool so uh, having a part of it and uh, it's neat to have a tribute to my grandmother the founder or one of the founders of the company